So, we will move along and uh, talk more of conditional densities and conditional expectation. It is uh, very important to understand this notion of conditional expectation because it will make frequent appearances in the, uh, in the prediction theory and throughout the course as well. So, as I have written here the uh, conditional density of y here in, in this case I have written on the slide for y, but on the board I have written for x does not matter you should understand. Now, this offers a nice way of writing the joint density as a product of the uh, conditional densities and the marginal density. Now, I have stopped writing the subscripts you have to understand that this is actually the marginal density of y and obviously by straightforward extension one can even write it this way. Okay? And we will use this expression, uh, expression later on when we talk of uh, maximum likelihood estimation and so on. Now, from this also stems the definition of independence which we will talk uh, about uh, shortly, but first let us look at the notion of a conditional expectation. All right. Yesterday we reviewed the notion of expectation which was to be called as the unconditional expectation that is only given information about x, what is uh, the best prediction of x? It is a expectation. Now, you can call it as unconditional expectation. Why it is unconditional? Because it is not conditioned on any other phenomena. So, let me give you an example. Suppose you were to ask what would happen to the outcome of the uh, ongoing cricket match or some other event in Rio Olympics for example. Okay? We know that uh, you know Saina and Sindhu have made it through their uh, opening games and or if you go to cricket the third day has been washed out in the India West Indies uh, test match, third test match. So, what is your prediction of uh, the outcome of this uh, test match? I, I know that not all of you are interested in cricket, but it is one word that you cannot escape if you are in India. You have to hear it at least some 100,000 times uh, in your life. So, what is your prediction? Let us say before the match began, what was your prediction? India wins. Right? There is some percentage and so on, e each uh, channel has its own statistical calculations and so on. So, this is based on uh, what, uh, what is your prediction based on? You say India wins that is your prediction, right? it can go wrong too, hope not, but it can go wrong. What is it based on? History. history. Okay? Let us assume that just you pulled off the history and you said you know if Previously, it used to be if it wins one, then the next one is a loss and so on, but looks like the pattern has changed now. But um, you know, there used to be also this pattern. I, I would say that the wickets that fall in a cricket match follows a pass on distribution. That is, if one person gets out, somehow two, three people get out in a row. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, the uh, you know, state transport buses in AP. Maybe I do not know if it is true for, I have not travelled so much by buses in Chennai. But when I used to go to school, the gen at that time I was not uh, possoned by the Poisson distribution in the school days. But the general observation was that if a bus arrives, then there are like two, three buses arriving with them together as if they have discussed and made sure that they all come together. And after that, there is no bus for about another half an hour. So, you are doomed if you are actually missed that point. So, likewise, here in cricket also if one person falls then there is at least two, three wickets falling in a row. Maybe you can study the distribution. Apparently, if you go to Crick Info, there is some enormous amounts of data that you can uh, spend your lifetime in analyzing and there is a lot of money in that. Okay? So, I am giving you some uh, ideas for startups. <laughs> All right. So, let us get back to the game. Uh, what, so, it is based on history. Now, the game begins like it began a couple of days ago. As the score starts to roll out, your prediction would change. I mean need not, but generally speaking it would change. Right? That is your conditional expectation. Your unconditional expectation is you are not given what is happening with regards to the event. Now, the score is your uh, another random variable. One random variable is the outcome of the game. Another random variable is the score that is happening. So, if I am 
uh, before the match begins I do not have any information about it. So, I have an unconditional kind of expectation based on whatever history that I have. Now, the score starts to pour in and I start making conditional expectations. The conditional expectation in general need not be the same as unconditional expectation, but you can see yesterday we argued intuitively that expectation uh, is the best prediction in the absence of any other information, best in the sense of mean square, minimum mean square error. It turns out that this conditional expectation that you see on the screen is also the best prediction of y. Imagine that you are predicting y earlier without x, now you are predicting y given x. So, the con conditional prediction is also the best prediction and this is one of the milestone results in prediction theory. Given two random variables, so if I have two random variables y and x and I want to predict y using x, you, uh, generally speaking you think of a neural network, some hundred neural networks and you have deep learning, deeper learning and so on. Deeper learning is yet to come, but right now we have gone from learning to deep learning and so on. You can build any complicated function of x, the conditional expectation will beat it all. Okay? So, they can, therefore, you should be well versed with the conditional expectations. You can write it this way. Uh, well, on the screen I have said x equals x, but generally we will stick to this notation and it is defined using the uh, conditional density there as the same way. It is the first moment, oh sorry, see how y, it is the first moment of the conditional density. Integrated or what? You are not divided on this. Sure? Okay. Because what you are doing is now you are saying x is anchored at some point. Now you are walking across the outcome space of y and taking the statistical average. All right? Which means that this condition expectation is a function of x. Very good. So, it is some function of x. You can build any complicated function of x to predict y given x, the conditional expectation will beat them all. In what sense? In the minimum mean square error senses. Among all the functions of x that will predict y given x, the conditional expectation has the lowest mean square error. Okay? And it is one of the most beautiful results in prediction theory, unfortunately it is one of the most difficult results to use in practice. Always nature is not so kind to us, we, we have some fantastic results in theory, but unfortunately we cannot use them. Why do you think we cannot use them, I mean we can use it, but it is very difficult to do this. Imagine now extending this to the multivariate case. What generally prevents us from using this? Uh, function in uh, so this result in practice for prediction purposes somewhere here sorry ah exactly so the again the same somebody was also saying conditional densities joint densities are very difficult to come by very difficult to obtain it's not easy maybe in the bivariate it's easier to estimate but the moment you move to maybe a 10 variable case Maybe 20 years down the line when we have you know in even more advances in computational power and also theory, we will be in a better position to use this result, but then we will have something else to trouble us, no worries. So, uh, this result is useful nevertheless to derive a lot of other uh, relations and uh, we will spend a bit more time on this conditional expectation. So, uh, let me state that result formally now. The, uh, Although I am not proving anything, we will revisit this result when we get into predictions. The conditional expectation is the best prediction of y given x and it is best in the minimum mean square error sense. Okay? Now, there is a very uh, nice uh, result which, which is kind of some good news. The bad news is uh, in using this result is we do not have generally the knowledge of conditional densities or joint densities and so on, but there is a good news in some situations. And that situation is when x and y are jointly Gaussian. Earlier we had seen the joint Gaussian density function, 
when x and y are jointly Gaussian, what we mean by that is x and y have a joint Gaussian distribution, then you can show theoretically that g of x is a linear function of x and that forms the uh, backbone of many of the linear models that we study in this course. We can prove it and you can prove it, you understood what I meant, right? You can prove it means it will be a part of your assignment. But it is a fairly easy problem to uh, uh, solve, it is a fairly easy thing to show. You start with the joint Gaussian density function and start evaluating the uh, conditional density, conditional expectation and then use a small trick and show that the uh, conditional expectation is a linear function of x. In general, g of x is nonlinear. So, what does it mean? Look at it this way. In we decide in general that given an opportunity, I would like uh, to work with linear models regardless of whether x and y are jointly Gaussian or not. Why? Because of convenience. It is easy to work with linear models, it is easy to estimate them, it is easy to analyze them. You will you will realize all of that when we talk of estimation. But then the question is given that this is the best predictor and that I decide to work with this kind of a model always at least to begin with which is a linear, uh, it is a, it's a linear predictor there, linear function of x. Obviously, in general I am working with a suboptimal predictor because g of x is in general a nonlinear function of x whereas I have decided to work with a linear function. Now, do I lose anything? Yes, in general I, I do lose the optimality, but the benefit that I have is mathematical convenience. Anyway, I have lot of uncertainties in life. So, why break my head actually in starting off with a very rigorous function of x and trying to uh, force fit that onto the data? Start off with a linear model. If it is doing a good job, I would do it. Now, the good news is that this result gives us some hope in many situations that if x and y are jointly Gaussian, then I have hit the jackpot. That means the linear predictor that I am going to fit, of course, I will have to be able to estimate a and b optimally also. It is assumed that there is a procedure to estimate a and b optimally. Let us say I have that in place, then your linear predictor is optimal predictor. You do not have to go in search of uh, any other predictor when x and y are jointly Gaussian. At the moment we are talking of random variables, we will stitch all of this uh, together for the random signal at a later stage, but it is very important to have this uh, clear in your minds. Any questions on this from the other audience there? Looks like they are perfect set of people there, I mean they are just understanding everything. Any questions here in this hall? Okay. So, Hopefully now you understand the conditional expectation is the best prediction, it is a nonlinear function of x, but when x and y are jointly Gaussian, then g of x is a linear function, but in general at least in the uh, in this course and in a, uh, as a beginner you would begin with linear predictors. You, uh, this result here is a, a good source of encouragement in the sense that your linear predictor is going to give you the optimal prediction when x and y are jointly Gaussian. What happens in a non-Gaussian? Obviously, it is going to give you suboptimal predictions. The extent of loss in your optimality entirely depends on the process then, on the nature of non uh, or deviation from the Gaussianity. We do not know. It is very hard to answer that question. Okay? <coughs>